Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Am I audible and visible everyone? Okay. So uh, let us start our vision for biostats today. Okay. So we can't cover or uh, like we'll try to cover all the important topics. Okay. In biostats, which you should know and which you must revise okay so all these sessions are basically for you to good afternoon all these sessions are basically for you to you know be on uh, toes okay with the most important topics that are asked in biostatistics okay so are you all ready so we're going to do biostatistics now the first one now similarly i'll try to cover all the important topics whichever is left okay but towards your inict okay as we approach INICT. All right, as we approach INICT, I will be taking an MCQ oriented round for INICT also, like two days, top 50 or top 70, as a karke MCQs also we'll be practicing for INICT. Similarly, we'll do it for NEET PG. Similarly, we'll do it for FMG exams. Okay. All right. So look at the first question. What is the answer over here? So the first topic is the types of variables. Okay. So what is the answer over here? Which of the following is a continuous variable? Anybody? Which of the following is a continuous variable? Blood group, weight, religion or sex? Which of the following is a continuous variable? Very good. So continuous variable is weight. Now why? Because I have already discussed with you. Whenever you have to classify the variables guys. Okay. You will classify it either as quantitative. Okay. You will classify it either as quantitative or you will classify it as qualitative. Okay. What are these quantitative variables? They can be measured. When I say measured 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 means they have a unit okay you have to always talk about measured means they have a unit okay plus they are comparable okay like i can compare my weight with your weight does it have a unit of course it has a unit kg gram pounds whatever qualitative hota hai, cannot be measured okay they cannot be measured at the same time what happens they cannot be measured and they cannot be compared okay they cannot be measured and they cannot be compared that's qualitative okay cannot be measured cannot be compared matlab ho gaya that there's no unit for it okay there's no unit so first of all whenever you get a variable like hemoglobin weight height okay or any blood parameters all of this have a unit plus we can compare them okay all right please just ask yourself does it have a unit or not but if you look at gender if you look at religion if you look at blood group okay do these have a unit do these have a unit do you have a uh, unit can you measure religion can you measure blood group no plus if i am a positive can i say i am more a positive than you no we can't do it okay similarly the second classification for variables is guys continuous and discrete okay what it is continuous okay the variables are either continuous or the variables are either discrete okay now by the logic all those variables this are that are continuous okay all the variables that are quantitative i mean okay all the variables good afternoon all the variables that are quantitative they are continuous also okay continuous means they can take up many possible values okay can take up what can take up many possible values okay many possible values and when i say can take up many possible values means they can be expressed in decimals okay you can express them in decimals discrete can take up fewer values no no in between values so no decimals for them okay by the logic you have to remember that all the quantitative variables are continuous and discrete kya hote discrete is all the qualitative variables okay all the qualitative variables are discrete everybody got it okay yes shivam is correct continuous variables ki frequency we represent by what is known as histogram and discrete variables ki frequency how do we represent guys Dis 
discrete variables frequency we represent by what is known as a bar diagram okay continuous variables frequency we represent by histogram and discrete variables we represent by bar diagram so the question that i gave you which of the following is a continuous variable of course it is weight because it has a unit plus it can be compared also okay so that's the first thing please remember now look at the various scales of measurement all the variables guys can be measured in different scales okay so what is the answer to this in a study following interpretation are obtained satisfied very satisfied dissatisfied this of course is an order okay so wherever you can put in an order it becomes an ordinal scale so all the variables can be measured in different scales of measurement okay if you want to uh, you know go to a little depth you'll have to text check out the uh, lectures on the app on preplad app but if you want just you know like a quick revision as of now this is enough okay scales of measurement may please remember there are two broader scales okay categorical scale as well as dimensional scale now when we talk about dimensional or metric scale okay dimensional or metric scale ka example kya hota hai the interval scale as well as the ratio scales okay they are so basically dimensional or metric scale is for all the quantitative variables okay all the quantitative variables ko we can measure on which scale guys all the quantitative variables we can measure on dimensional or metric scale and all the qualitative variables okay all the qualitative variables they can be measured on categorical scale this is further divided into two broader categories nominal and ordinal nominal is simply based on names ordinal means wherever you can express as an order okay yes very good sunil like ordinal means a uh, likert scale the one that we just saw this is a likert scale this is an order okay you're satisfied you're very satisfied you're dissatisfied so that's an order okay similarly you can have glasgow coma scale or you can have what child park score theek hai child park score or you can have any other thing that you know of apgar score okay you can have very very important stage of cancer theek hai staging of cancer so all this like grading of anemias okay mild moderate severe anemia but if i ask you that um if i ask you yes in ratio scales a true zero is present okay in interval it is not all right now most of the quantitative variables are going by the ratio scales okay gutman scale very good severity of anemia grading of hypertension all that is an order so we go for ordinal scale suppose i asked you do you have hypertension which scale will you use this uh, will you measure this presence or absence of disease anybody in which scale do you measure presence or absence of disease anyone kaun se scale mein presence ya absence of disease measure hota hai can you tell me presence or absence of disease which scale will you measure is it nominal is it ordinal what is it very good it's just a nominal scale why because your answer to this will be what it will be yes or no right so presence or absence of disease will be measured in yes or no so this becomes a nominal scale okay similarly look over here this we've discussed before also but we'll just revise it now uh, which variable like you have birth weight in gram so which of the following a b c d option will you use will you use a continuous variable will you use an ordinal scale will you use a nominal scale will you use a dichotomous one if i ask you birth weight in grams how will you measure birth weight in grams guys anybody Yes, very good. Birth weight in grams, okay, can be fifty, uh, can be twenty five hundred point one gram also. Yes, similarly, like um, you know, even if that we do for kgs, two point one kg, okay, or three point two kg. So they can be expressed in decimals as well. So they are continuous. Birth weight as low, medium, high. Now, if I say low, medium, high, that's an order. So it is ordinal scale. If I say birth weight is low, not low. What can you use over here? Suppose I say birth weight low, not low. How many of you say this is a nominal scale? Low, not low. How many of you say? See, ideally, dichotomous is better because. 
because low not low is having two answers okay two values low or not low okay dichotomous variables are which can take up two values okay but if we didn't have dichotomous in the option we can also call this as nominal okay is the birth weight low is the birth weight not low so we could also call this as what guys we could also call this as nominal scale okay but look at this what is the delivery type how many of the people underwent a c section how many of women underwent a natural delivery how many of the women underwent an induced delivery so what is this c section natural induced so when i say type of delivery okay i can say so many percentage of women went underwent a c section so what is this very good this becomes it's based on names so this becomes a nominal scale of measurement okay it's not an order please be very careful anything which i can put into an order is ordinal scale otherwise we can always say like you know over here if i go to the community how many women underwent a normal delivery how many women underwent a c section how many women underwent a induced delivery so when i say type of delivery it's simply a nominal scale okay there's no order there polyotomous can also be this to the okay but i don't have polyotomous as the option here right so like for dichotomous low not low we could also write nominal that's not wrong but since we had dichotomous variable we went with that got it everybody okay all right so that's the first topic we cover types of variables and the various scales of measurement now next topic is what measures of central tendency so can you tell me the answer over here what is the best central tendency measure over here anybody what is the best central tendency measure over here can anyone tell me what is the best central tendency measure over here median or mean what is going to be your answer okay look at the data guys look at the data do you find anything wrong in this data do you find anything wrong in this data 18 20 22 24 26 28 30 okay i will show you another question look at this data here now what is the difference between the data that i showed you before prior and the data that i'm showing you now the data set that i show you now is it the same or is it different like can you spot any difference in the data set which was shown in the previous question and the data set which is shown over here what is it guys look at the values over here okay it is 250 320 190 300 300 so they were all three digit numbers but all of a sudden came 5000 now 5000 is it uh, do you think it belongs to this data set i was supposed to write maybe i was entering the data set i was supposed to write 500 and i entered it as 5000 right mujhe isko entry maarni thi 500 but maine usko 5000 likh di so this is what this is an outlier okay this is an outlier what is an outlier guys what is an outlier outlier is too high or too low values in a data set okay too high or too low values in a data set which is going to distort my data okay they do not belong part of that now suppose i am taking a class where you're preparing for neat pg or a neat pg aspirant or an fmg or an iict or upsc but now suppose an iit wala aspirant comes and sits in the class does he belong to this class no he is going to distort my result he will be called as an outlier did you understand so you have to spot the outlier see theoretically if you look at the data set if you find very high or very low numbers you can say they are outliers theek hai and whenever you have outliers data set kya ho jata hai skewed but here when there were no outliers okay they were normal two digit uh, distribution so here there were no outliers so this is what this is a normal distribution okay this is a normally distributed data okay so for normal distribution what is the best measure of central tendency mean why because any which ways guys statistically okay statistically what is the best measure of central tendency statistically the best measure of central tendency is mean why 
because it includes the sum of all observations okay mean is always equal to the sum of all observations okay the sum of all observations divided by what divided by the total number of observations okay it includes what the sum of all observations it's adding up all the values it's not leaving behind any value so since there were no outliers we would use mean but if you come to this question guys and you try to calculate the mean what is going to happen if you calculate mean you will add up 250 320 190 300 and 5000 now what happens when you add up 5000 when you add up 5000 your numerator increases and then your mean will increase okay guess but what will happen if you have to calculate median over here median kya hota hai middle value when data is arranged in ascending or descending order so please don't forget to arrange your data in ascending or descending order so if you arrange it 160 190 i mean 100 160 190 just have a look and keep arranging okay 250 like whatever 260 300 your 5000 is going to go towards one end okay 5000 it's not visible okay 5000 thousand is going to go towards one end and what it what is median going to be the middle value median kya hoga beach ka value jab data ascending or descending order mein arranged hai thik hai ab jo outlier tha humare data set mein wo extreme mein ja chuka hai okay so will it affect the final calculation of median it is not going to affect because that has gone outside so i mean towards one extreme so First thing that you have to identify is it normal distributed, skewed distributed. Okay, if it's normally distributed data, mean is the best measure. Because mean statistically, it includes the sum of all observations divided by the total number of observations. But when I talk about median, guys, it is the middle value when data is arranged in ascending or descending order. So over here, what happened? Median, the middle value, the, the 5000, which was an outlier, went towards one extreme. Okay, do you know any test to identify? identify outliers guys there are some statistical test jaise grubbs test ek outlier identify karta hai dixon test okay all these test grubbs test dixon test they can identify what outliers okay all right yes uh, the best one we are going to use over here is the arithmetic mean okay because geometric mean again is going to use logarithms and all of that okay dixon q test and grubbs test but to solve your mcqs you will just look at the data and see that if there's extremely high or low values they are outliers so best measure of central tendency when you have outliers or a skewed data set is median mean is most affected when you have a skewed data set otherwise statistically mean is the best measure of central tendency okay all right what is the answer to this out of 11 births in a hospital five babies weighed over 2.5 and five babies weighed less than 2.5 so we know there are 11 births 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 okay now 1 2 3 4 5 five babies ka weight is above a particular value and five babies ka weight is below a particular value so that middle value which we are talking about is what 2.5 kg okay all right so this is the middle value this becomes what guys median it was very clear that five babies are above five babies are below see whenever you have odd number of observations please remember this jabhi bhi hamare paas na odd number of observations hai all right median kya hoga odd number of observations mein median is going to be the middle value when data is arranged in ascending or descending order but jab hamare paas even number of observations hoga theek hai even number of observations what is median going to be it is going to be the average of two middle values okay it is going to be what the average of two middle values jab data ascending or descending order mein aayega theek hai bhulna nahi isko this is these things are more important uh, when it comes to biostats okay so they can definitely and definitely ask you okay now based on whether it's a normally distributed data or a skewed distributed data i mean outlier skewed presentation you can have graphical representation okay so one is a normal distribution one is a skewed distribution so tell me the points about normal distribution what is right and what is wrong over here anybody not true about standard normal curve equal distribution on either side of the curve the total area under the curve guys the total area under the curve 
yeah the total area under the curve is 2 its mean is 0 standard deviation is 1 what do you mean by normal distribution and what do you mean by standard normal distribution guys they go jab hum normal distribution ki baat karte hai na this is how the curve looks like okay there are no outliers so if i drop a perpendicular in the middle at this point okay 50 percent observations are above and 50 percent observations are below 50 percent means 0 0.5 0 0.5 and both the sides are bilaterally symmetrical okay both the yes chauvinet and Pierce also that is more important for your INICT exam okay all right so now what happens over here this is right at this it's like both the sides are mirror images of each other okay bilaterally symmetrical hai or mirror images lagta hai thik hai? but over here this pink dot is a POC point of coincidence at this what happens mean is equal to median is equal to mode now mean is equal to median is equal to mode could be could be anything 100 120 500 whatever okay but please remember jabhi bina mean is equal to median is equal to mode is equal to zero guys okay tab isko we call it as a standard normal curve okay we call it as a standard normal curve okay and if you see over here the correct representation mean is zero and standard deviation is the measure of spread of data right it's the measure of dispersion how the data is spread or how or the variability or the spread so here pe standard deviation becomes what guys here pe standard deviation becomes 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 which is equal to 1 so the correct representation i've written 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 which is equal to 1 so correct representation for a normal distribution curve mean 0 hota hai, standard deviation 1 hota hai. so yahan pe kya likha hua hai? equal distribution on either side yes 50% above 50% below bilaterally symmetrical total area under the curve is 2 no the total area under the curve is 1 guys mean is 0 yes standard deviation is 1 will you remember this everybody Take care. these are some golden points which you must know the equations also we will discuss but before that tell me the answer answer to this simple question which came in neat pg a study has a normal distribution with the median value as 20 and uh, 200 and standard deviation as 20 68 percent observation is going to fall between what will be your answer here very good so yaha pe all you need to remember is just we are going to continue this was my poc point of coincidence theek hai yaha pe hum log kya karte we are going to drop perpendiculars one is the pink line okay then we are going to drop one purple line over here or blue line over here theek hai and one we are going to drop let's say a green line so this first line okay the first line which is the pink line plus one is 1 SD and minus 1 SD okay it cuts it so the first equation is mean plus minus 1 SD will cover 68% observation okay when you talk about the blue line everybody that is how much mean plus minus 2 SD is going to cover what percent of observation 95% okay and the green one is cutting my perpendicular into 3 so mean plus minus 3 SD is going to cover 99% of observations clear kabhi ek bar exactly pucha tha aims mein that mean plus minus dash sd covers 90 percent so just look at it 1.64 sd and if i ask you that you know how many uh mean plus minus what standard deviation is going to cover 100 percent mean plus minus how much standard deviation is going to cover 100 percent observations so it is infinite okay it is infinite therefore ye jo tails hai na, ye the the ends of the tails never touch the base guys okay the ends of the tail never touch the base got it so here you had to write 68 so now you will say ma'am ye to median likha hai but normal distribution ke liye mean median mode sab barabar hai so 200 plus minus 1 into 20 covers 68 percent so this is how much 200 plus minus 20 is going to cover 68 percent so this becomes what did you give your answer as c very good this is something that you can expect in inict also neat pg also but how does a skewed observation look like read this 
लुक लाइक हाउ विल यू से कि ये कौन सा डेटा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है कैन एनी वन टेल मी वॉट इज दिस वॉट इज दिस टाइप ऑफ डेटा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कैन यू टेल मी यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है वेरी गुड ऑल ऑल दिस इज अ स्टोरी प्लीज डोंट फॉल फॉर दिस स्टोरी ओके ऑल यू हैव टू डू इज यू हैव टू लुक एट मीन विच इज मोर देन मीडियन ओवर ईयर ठीक है विच इज मोर देन मोड ओवर ईयर ये कितना है टू सिक्सटी ये कितना है टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स ये कितना है वन नाइन्टी फोर तो मीन मीडियन से ज़्यादा है मीडियन मोड से ज़्यादा है ठीक है सो ये कौन सा डेटा सेट हो गया वेर मीन इज मोर देन मीडियन राइट साइडेड और पॉजिटिवली स्क्यूड ठीक है फॉर दिस यू हैव टू ऑलवेज लुक एट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द टेल ऑल राइट बट इफ इट वाज लेफ्ट साइडेड गाइस लाइक दिस हियर व्हाट हैपेंस मीन इज लेस देन मीडियन इज लेस देन बोर्ड सो दिस यू कैन वेरी वेल मेक आउट नथिंग सो स्पेशल अबाउट इट ओके नेक्स्ट लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक टेस्ट ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिकल सिग्निफिकेंस कैन यू आंसर हाउ व्हाट इज द करेक्ट अप्रोच एंड हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू डू दिस वन थिंक एंड आंसर गाइज क्वालिटेटिव डेटा क्वालिटेटिव डेटा के लिए पैरामेट्रिक है या नॉन पैरामेट्रिक है बताओ सो देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिकल टेस्ट सो के वन इज द पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट एंड वॉट इज द अदर वन द नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट ठीक है वन इज द पैरामेट्रिक वन इज द नॉन पैरामेट्रिक ऑल यू नीड टू अगेन फिगर आउट इज आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट क्वान्टिटेटिव और आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट क्वालिटेटिव वेरिएबल्स सो पैरामेट्रिक में गाइज यू विल ऑलवेज यूज जब मेरे पास क्वान्टिटेटिव वेरिएबल्स होगा नॉन पैरामेट्रिक ऑलवेज क्वालिटेटिव क्वान्टिटेटिव मीन्स वी कैन एक्सप्रेस इन एक्सप्रेस इट इन मीन्स एंड एस डीज क्वालिटेटिव मीन्स द वेरिएबल इज एक्सप्रेस इन परसेंटेज एंड प्रपोर्शन ठीक है पैरामेट्रिक इज ऑलवेज यूज फॉर नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओके एंड इट इज मोर पावरफुल ठीक है पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट हमेशा ज्यादा पावरफुल होता है नॉन पैरामेट्रिक इज ऑलवेज यूज फॉर स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन गाइज ठीक है इट इज यूज फॉर स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड इट इज डेफिनेटली लेस पावरफुल सो सो अगेन द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू डू इज फिगर आउट पैरामेट्रिक क्वान्टिटेटिव है क्वालिटेटिव है ऑल्सो वन बज वर्ड दैट आई हैव गिवन यू All the parametric test guys are associated with what alphabets. ठीक है सारा parametric test is associated with alphabets. Okay, all right. But non-parametric tests, okay, is associated with non-parametric test is associated with what fancy names. Okay, fancy names. All right. ओके मीडियन कुड बी आइदर ऑफ द साइड्स ठीक है मीडियन कुड ऑल बी आइदर ऑफ द साइड्स ओके सोनल इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द टाइप ऑफ वेरिएबल वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ओके बट यू वोंट बी आस दैट यू विल बी लाइक दे विल आस्क यू टू फिगर आउट क्वांटिटेटिव है क्वालिटेटिव है इफ यू कैन यूज इन मीन्स एंड एस डीज ठीक है मीडियन कैन समटाइम्स देर आर फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स वेर इट गोज टूवर्ड्स पैरामेट्रिक ऑल्सो बट हियर यू जस्ट हैव टू रिमेम्बर एक टू सॉल्व योर एम सी क्यूज क्वान्टिटेटिव की बात हो रही है क्वालिटेटिव की आई टोल्ड यू क्वान्टिटेटिव वेरिएबल्स आर एल्फाबेट्स सो टी टेस्ट इज एन एल्फाबेट टी इज एन एल्फाबेट आई शो यू द नेम्स ऑफ द टेस्ट टी ए पी इज द न्यूमोनिक T test A for ANOVAs and Pearson correlation coefficient. I'll show you that, okay? Or ANOVA, okay? They are this. Which is one for qualitative? The fancy name, the chi-square test. Now see. Just tell me. Look at this. Please try to tell me. Are we talking first? I'm not going to right now tell you about. Uh, द नेम्स ऑफ द टेस्ट आई एम नॉट आस्किंग यू दैट बस मुझे इतना बताओ कि इस क्वेश्चन में आप क्वान्टिटेटिव वेरिएबल देख रहे हो या क्वालिटेटिव वेरिएबल देख रहे हो बताओ नहीं नहीं आंसर मत दो मुझे बस इतना बताओ कि इस क्वेश्चन में अभी आप क्वान्टिटेटिव वेरिएबल देख रहे हो या क्वालिटेटिव देख रहे हो देखो गाइज इफ यू नो इट दैट्स गुड ओके आई एम आई एम कंडक्टिंग दीज सेशंस टू ओनली यू नो रिफाइन योर अप्रोच ओके सो यू कैन गेट एनी अदर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी योर अप्रोच यू हैव टू फिगर आउट दैट आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट क्वान्टिटेटिव 
or are we talking about qualitative guys that's the first thing of course look over here a study to compare hemoglobin now i've just told you to figure out ki ye quantitative hai pata ho tum kaise karoge ki ye quantitative variable hai ya qualitative hai maine aapko kya sikhaya bas itna poocho khud se ki uska unit hai ya nahi hai hemoglobin has a unit gram per dl plus i can compare my hemoglobin with you so definitely this is a quantitative now ma'am has said like i told i've taught you that whenever it is quantitative i will use a parametric test now the important thing that i'm going to just quickly revise with you is that what are the parametric tests and what are the non parametric tests before we go to that questions okay so parametric remember two things okay it is associated with alphabets as well as there's a mnemonic for it tap okay you will see it is associated with alphabets and mnemonic is tap okay when you talk about non parametric okay non parametric is pe kya hota hai guys it is always associated with fancy names okay it is associated with what fancy names so t test mein ek banda tha jisne is test ko discover kiya uska naam tha student t test okay student he discovered t test in this you have a paired t test okay and you have a unpaired t test okay you have a paired t test and you have a unpaired t test paired t test is done for a single group okay but like you have to compare mean hemoglobin just as question mein tha okay you are comparing you will always compare mean and sds so compare mean hemoglobin let's say in a group okay in a single group in a group of let's say dengue patients okay before treatment after treatment okay before treatment and after that means for pet t test you have an intervention before that intervention after that intervention you are comparing the means okay unpaired t test is independent t test also you can also call it as independent t test this is for two groups like you have to compare mean hemoglobin in a group of dengue patient in a group of malaria patient but what is a guys a stands for anova okay you are going to compare mean hemoglobin in three group in more than two groups okay more than two groups means three or more whatever and p se hota hai aapka pearson correlation coefficient the one that we study in scatter diagram okay so pearson correlation coefficient now everybody which is there every test which is there on the parametric side has a friend on the non parametric side so what are its friend on the non parametric side guys let me revise that with you so there was a person okay his name was wilcoxon isne ek test discover kiya wilcoxon sign rank test okay this again is for a single group okay percentage and proportion like percentage of obesity in a woman before treatment and after treatment okay so we are looking at prevalence or percentage there's another name for paired t test here mcnemar test okay but for unpaired for two groups you can use chi square test you can also use what is known as wilcoxon ne ek ordinal data ke liye rank sum test discover kiya okay this was for which data set for ordinal data okay and also you have one more man whitney u test now can you see these are all fancy names and i told you non parametric test is always associated with which names fancy names theek hai anova now anova means idhar percentage and uh, prevalence in more than two groups so more than two groups you can have chi square test also you have yahan pe a name cruz call valis and friedman test okay cruz call valis and friedman test and pearson ka friend on this side everybody is pearman correlation coefficient how will you identify all the fancy names are on the non parametric side theek hai so you could be asked any of the name now look at this question hemoglobin level was conducted on alcoholics before and after consumption so now here i'll look for one more question i wanted to give you now do you have a single group here or do you have more than two groups here so you have a single group of alcoholics guys theek hai 
आई टेल यू हाउ टू डिफ्रेंशिएट अनोवा एंड का स्पेयर आदित्य जस्ट अ सेकेंड एक ग्रुप ऑफ एल्कोहलिक्स है इसका हीमोग्लोबिन देखो बिफोर इंटरवेंशन दैट इज बिफोर ट्रीटमेंट अगेन कंपेयर हीमोग्लोबिन आफ्टर ट्रीटमेंट ओके सो वॉट डज दिस बिकम एवरीबडी दिस इज अ पेटी टेस्ट कॉट इट ना सपोज आई गिव यू अ क्वेश्चन compare cholesterol levels in a group of elderly adolescent versus group of males what will you use over here aditya batao anybody can tell if you have to compare cholesterol now cholesterol do you have a parameter over here what will you use over here batao cholesterol cholesterol kaise aap express kar sakte ho cholesterol ho gaya hdl ho gaya ldl ho gaya any of it now will you have an unpaired t test how many groups are there oswald how many groups are there you have a group of you first figured out that all these are they have a unit so they are what quantitative variables right they can be expressed in means and sts now there's a group of elderly one group there's a group of adolescent there's group of males so this is more than two groups but what am i comparing what am i comparing everybody i am comparing a quantitative variable so this is going to be anova okay but suppose i had given you okay suppose i had given you Which statistical test is the best to study age group stage of cancer what are you going to write age group now see age groups okay can be like you know suppose 20 to 25 26 to 30 all right so these are different age groups but you will not look at that you will look at the outcome variable always now stage of cancer is quantitative or qualitative we know it is qualitative okay stage 1 2 3 whatever now here you have 2 by 2 groups okay 2 3 by 2 you can use a chi square but in the option because you are comparing percentage and proportion but in the option if you also see wilcoxon rank some test please remember wilcoxon rank some test okay is used for what wilcoxon rank some test wherever you word use the word rank it means it's an order so wilcoxon rank some test everybody is used for order agar wilcoxon rank some test nahi hota you can go for chi square test did you understand now you always have to look at the outcome variable theek hai did you understand did you get it guys this is an important point now tell me z test is it parametric is it non parametric z test in the exam if you get z test and they ask you what is it is it parametric is it non parametric what is your answer over here z test parametric hai ya non parametric hai batao iska answer kya hai z now z like i've told you is alphabet okay so z becomes what parametric test it's associated with an alphabet also this z test is used in place of what this is used in place of t test okay this is used in place of t test guys okay jab sample size kitna hota hai more than 30 ओके बट इफ आई हेड गिवन यू फिशर एग्जैक्ट टेस्ट ओके इफ आई गिव यू फिशर एग्जैक्ट टेस्ट लुक एट दिस नाउ दिस इज अ fancy name and i have told you fancy name means these are what this is a non parametric test and fisher exact test is used when this is used in place of chi square test okay in place of chi square test when sample size is less than 30 so that's how you're going to figure out okay all right now let us see certain graphs over here which one is this graph can anyone tell me where we are looking at heights of black cherry trees so now guys height kya है क्वांटिटेटिव है या क्वालिटेटिव है इफ आई टॉक अबाउट हाइट कैन यू मेजर हाइट यस यू हैव अ यूनिट कैन यू कंपेयर हाइट यस सो दिस इज व्हाट कंटीन्यूअस 
and when you have to represent the frequency of continuous variable everybody okay frequency of continuous variables guys what are we going to use we are going to use a histogram okay continuous see there's no gap on the x axis we always write the class intervals okay and on the y axis we write the frequencies aur yahan pe aap dekh sakte ho koi bhi gap nahi hai there is no gap because we are talking about which variables continuous variables okay quantitative variables but if i had asked you this in this class how many boys are there how many girls are there ठीक है दिस इज बॉयज दिस इज गर्ल्स एंड दिस इज फ्रीक्वेंसी वॉट इज दिस नाउ बॉयज गर्ल्स दैट मीन्स आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट जेंडर ऑल राइट नाउ जेंडर कैन यू मेजर इन अ यूनिट नो कैन यू कंपेयर नो जेंडर इज विच टाइप ऑफ वेरिएबल गाइज डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल्स सो टू मेजर द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल एवरीबडी हम लोग क्या यूज करेंगे टू मेजर द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ विच वेरिएबल टू मेजर द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ डिस्क्रीट वेरिएबल्स गाइज वॉट आर यू गोइंग टू यूज यू आर गोइंग टू यूज अ बार ग्राफ ओके एंड वेन यू टॉक अबाउट बार बार इज अ थ्री लेटर वर्ड गैप इज अ थ्री लेटर वर्ड सो गैप and bar go together now this one is a simple bar diagram okay this one is a simple bar but if you get something like that okay in one city we are representing in the same bar four different blood groups this is what this is a component bar diagram okay what is it this is a component bar diagram please remember ye ho gaya tumhara component bar diagram okay but look at this one over here ye ho gaya component bar diagram okay? Okay, this is component. But what is this one? This is your multiple bar diagram. Okay, this is what this is my multiple bar diagram. Okay. Okay. Now, if I have to represent the incidence of a disease over time, all right. If I have to represent, the question came trends of a disease over time. Okay, trends of a disease. ओवर टाइम ओके या मैंने पूला आपको रिप्रेजेंट करो इंसिडेंस ऑफ केस ओवर टाइम इंसिडेंस ऑफ अ डिजीज ओवर टाइम सो वॉट हैपन्स वच वन विल यू यूज ओवर यर द केसेस कैन इंक्रीज कैन डिक्रीज कैन इंक्रीज कैन डिक्रीज दिस इज वॉट लाइन डाइग्राम ओके वॉट इज दिस लाइन डाइग्राम वेर वी आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग द ट्रेंड्स ऑफ अ डिजीज और इंसिडेंस ऑफ अ डिजीज ओवर टाइम बट अगर कभी भी ना कोई डिप नहीं है द केसेज आर कॉन्स्टेंटली इंक्रीज okay like here this is what cumulative increase in data okay cumulative increase in the number of cases okay constantly badh raha hai or you could also call it as recurrent cases okay this is what an ogive a cumulative frequency curve theek hai question aa sakta hai ek patient tha tb ka theek hai wo cure ho gaya but is positive again which graph will you use so constant increase ho raha hai the cases are continuously adding up so we will use cumulative frequency curves but when i have to talk about percentages and proportions like suppose rda recommended dietary allowance okay i have to tell i can express in percentage and proportions what do i mean by that ki aapke diet mein okay proteins kitna hona chahiye 10 to 15% protein hona chahiye theek hai fats kitna hona chahiye 15 to 30 50 परसेंट फैट्स होना चाहिए कार्ब्स कितना होना चाहिए 50 टू 70 परसेंट कार्ब्स होना चाहिए सो ऑल दिस इज परसेंटेज सो दिस बिकम्स व्हाट गाइस दिस बिकम्स व्हाट इज नोन एज अ पाइ चार्ट ओके दिस इज अ पाइ चार्ट ओके नाउ एनीबडी कैन टेल मी व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस डायग्राम वेयर यू हैव क्वांटिटेटिव एंड क्वालिटेटिव दोनों में व्हाट इज द ओवरलैपिंग पोर्शन हियर ओके सो व्हाट इज दिस एवरीवन दिस इज नथिंग बट अ वेन डायग्राम ओके दिस इज नथिंग बट अ वेन डायग्राम एंड दिस वाज समथिंग विद जॉन स्नो ड्रू स्पॉट मैप स्पॉट मैप वाज ड्रॉन बाय जॉन स्नो ओके ड्यूरिंग द कॉलरा एपिडेमिक इन लंडन ही ड्रू दिस टू शो व्हाट ही ड्रू दिस टू शो लोकल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ केसेस okay what did he draw this to show the local distribution of cases theek hai local distribution of cases ke liye john snow ne spot map draw kiya tha okay one last thing that i wanted to discuss over here can anyone answer the question to this one two three more things i'll tell you what is the answer to this
ग्राफ टू को रिलेट टू क्वान्टिटेटिव डेटा सो को रिलेशन के लिए क्या है हिस्टोग्राम है स्कैटर डाइग्राम है लाइन डाइग्राम है फ्रीक्वेंसी कर्व है आंसर यस नॉट लाइन लाइन इज ट्रेंड ऑफ एन इवेंट केसेस इंक्रीजिंग केसेस डिक्रीजिंग ये क्या है स्कैटर डाइग्राम फॉर स्कैटर डाइग्राम द टर्म इज को रिलेशन बिटवीन क्वान्टिटेटिव वेरियबल्स यू कैन हैव अ पॉजिटिव को रिलेशन पॉजिटिव को रिलेशन मतलब सारे डॉट्स यहाँ है इफ एक्स एक्सेस इंक्रीजेज वाई एक्सेस इंक्रीजेज नो को रिलेशन इज समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड एन अदर वन इज नेगेटिव को रिलेशन ओके डॉट्स है यो दिस वन इज आर एस प्लस वन आर एस इक्वल टू जीरो आर एस इक्वल टू माइनस वन सो ह्योर दिस वन एवरीबडी इज परफेक्टली पॉजिटिव ओके दिस इज नो एसोसिएशन एंड दिस वन राइट ओवर ह्योर is perfectly negative okay r ki value lies from minus 1 to 0 to plus 1 okay all right that is see frequency curve is just like um see when you have a histogram okay a gauri and you join the midpoints of it it takes a shape of a polygon okay but if you have wider class intervals okay it changes into a curve like this frequency curve aisa hota hai nothing it's nothing very difficult about it okay now frequency curve it's like following the types of epidemic curve depending on the types of epidemic it can look different also all right so that is what is simply a frequency curve histogram mein midpoints join karo frequency polygon hua class intervals wider ho gaye it will become a frequency curve okay all right now suppose a, a examiner or a researcher got a value plus Plus one point six four. Is it okay? Does it show positive correlation, negative correlation, or no association, or is it something else? अगर मुझे एक research में value आए या R की plus one point six four, what will you say? Is it positive? Is it negative? Or is it no correlation? Or is it none of the above? What is your answer? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it no correlation? बच्चे no correlation के लिए r की value zero होनी चाहिए minus one to zero to plus one zero होनी चाहिए for no association. Okay, now can you ever get plus one point six four? Is it positive? No. Is it positive? Gauri, Aditya, Sonal, positive है ये plus one point six four कभी भी correlation coefficient आ सकता है नहीं correlation coefficient is minus one to zero to plus one it can never come one point six four that means the researcher calculated it wrong did you understand guys everybody that's how they are going to trick you in the exams okay all right okay one last thing let us talk about types of errors i'll just give you one smaller point over here no no problem just don't repeat the mistake what is type 1 error everybody what is type 1 error how have we learned it so in biostats you have two errors guys i'll quickly tell you this okay type 1 type 2 type 1 ko always associate with the word true टाइप टू के लिए याद रखना वर्ड फॉल्स पहले ट्रू होता है फिर फॉल्स होता है सो एच नॉट यहाँ पे ट्रू है टी फॉर ट्रू बट आर फॉर रिजेक्टेड एंड वॉट इज योर टाइप टू एच नॉट एफ फॉर फॉल्स है बट एक्सेप्टेड नाउ वट डू आई मीन बाई दिस In reality, H not is true. H not means no difference between the two drugs in the treatment of a disease. Okay, so in reality, H not is true. That means there was no difference. But you are very smart. On the basis of clinical trial, you showed your showed a difference. That means. रियालिटी में असलियत में रियालिटी में कोई डिफरेंस नहीं था इन द ट्रीटमेंट बिटवीन द टू ड्रग्स बट तुमने क्या किया बेस्ड ऑन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल आपने क्या किया बेस्ड ऑन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल यू शोड अ डिफरेंस ओके जो कि अच्छी बात नहीं थी यू शोड अ डिफरेंस एंड व्हाट डिड यू डू यू लॉन्च योर ड्रग इन द मार्केट आपने मार्केट में ड्रग लॉन्च कर दिया सो दिस इज अ फॉल्स पॉजिटिव ट्रायल ओके बट टाइप टू एरर में क्या होता है इन रियालिटी 
रियलिटी एच नॉट फॉल्स है मतलब वाकई में आपकी ड्रग अच्छी है ओके योर ड्रग इज गुड बट क्लिनिकल ट्रायल के बेसिस में तुम वो डिफरेंस दिखा नहीं पाए और आपने अपने ड्रग को मार्केट में लाया ही नहीं ओके दिस इज फॉल्स नेगेटिव वाकई में आपकी ड्रग अच्छी थी इन रियालिटी योर ड्रग वॉज गुड बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली यू कुड नॉट शो दैट ऑन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल सो आप अपने ड्रग को मार्केट में लेके ही नहीं आ पाए सो दैट इज वॉट इज फॉल्स नेगेटिव नाउ विच वन इज मोर सीरियस का इज फॉल्स पॉजिटिव योर ड्रग तुम्हारा ड्रग अच्छा नहीं था बट यू शोड कि तुम्हारा ड्रग अच्छा है पुटिंग पीपल्स लाइफ is at risk okay false negative is less serious because uh, you your drug was good but you couldn't show it बट ऑलरेडी एक मार्केट में ड्रग तो है ही ठीक है सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दीज टर्म्स टाइप वन के लिए ट्रू वर्ड याद रखो नल हाइपोथिस इज ट्रू बट रिजेक्ट गॉट इट एवरीबडी ना हाउ मच ऑफ टाइप वन एर कैन वी कमिट लास्ट पॉइंट विच इज गिवन बाई पी वैल्यू P value is what the probability of committing a type one error. Okay, how much of type one error I can commit? Probability of committing a type one error. Okay, that is what is P value. And P value less than zero point zero five is statistically significant. Okay, in very simple terms, statistically significant. Okay, even if it is equal to zero point, not equal to. Gauri, equal bologi wo not significant. प्लीज रिमेंबर अगर पी वैल्यू इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव होगा दिस इज नॉन सिग्निफिकेंट ओके दिस इज नॉन सिग्निफिकेंट इट हैज टू बी लेस ऑल राइट स्टैटिस्टिकली सिग्निफिकेंट मतलब क्या होता है इट फेवर्स alternate hypothesis and what was alternate hypothesis it means that new drug is actually good new drug is actually good new drug is really good it's not by chance that new drug is good no vakai mein naya drug acha hai aur hum wahi dikha rahe like if there are three researchers one of them got a value p10.02 a ka aaya 0.02 a ka aaya 0.03 who study is best this one why if i do my study 100 times it's only 3 times I I will reject a true null hypothesis, which can happen by chance. But ninety-seven times, okay, drug really good है. Drug is good, guys, and that is what we are showing. All right. Just remember for your exams, for your upcoming I N I C T also, p value has to be less than zero point zero five to call it statistically significant. Statistically significant का मतलब होता है वो alternate hypothesis को favour करता है. हम कभी भी नहीं बोलेंगे एक्सेप्टिंग या रिजेक्टिंग अ ऑल्टरनेट हाइपोथेसिस नो फेवर करता है मतलब यू ड्रग एक्चुअली अच्छा और तुम वही दिखा रहे हो got it everybody understood this concept okay so we did types of variables we did scales of measurements we did we did touch mean median mode okay one more thing over here the formula for standard deviation kya hai guys summation ye bahut baar inict mein puchte hain divided by n but if the sample size is less than 30. This becomes mu i minus mu whole square by n minus one. ये p by q है. Range का formula क्या है? Range is maximum value minus minimum value. Okay, you can get to calculate this. Standard error of mean का formula याद रखना. Standard deviation upon square root of n. As I N I C T approaches, I will take one day class to uh, tell you that. Difference between correlation regression. देखो uh, क्या नाम है आपका? अंजी अंजलि मे बी ओके नाउ सी वॉट इज को रिलेशन ओके को रिलेशन एवरीबडी इज सिंपली डिरेक्शन ऑफ एसोसिएशन ओके इट इज सिंपली डिरेक्शन ऑफ एसोसिएशन आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग डिरेक्शन दैट मीन्स वॉट If a variable on x-axis is increasing, what is happening to the variable on y-axis? That is correlation. ठीक है But regression क्या होता है Regression होता है unitary change. Okay, if there is unitary change in x variable, all right? Suppose two variables are correlated or associated. Okay, positive, negative, whatever. Now unitary change regression बताएगा That means if there is one unit 
चेंज लेट से इन एक्स वेरिएबल ओके हाउ मेनी यूनिट्स विल इट चेंज और विल इट अफेक्ट द वाई वेरिएबल सो इट इज यूनिटरी चेंज डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड हाँ जी ओके इट इज यूनिटरी चेंज इन एक्स वेरिएबल एंड वाई वेरिएबल वाई एक्सेस वाले वेरिएबल्स दैट मीन सपोज इफ द वेरिएबल ऑन एक्स एक्सेस इंक्रीजेज बाई वन यूनिट the variable on y axis is it increasing or decreasing and by how many units when you are just telling the direction that it is increasing or decreasing its correlation but when you say the number of units it is increasing or decreasing by that is a regression is it clear all right i have a video you can just google that up anji it says correlation and regression by ne dr neha aise karke likho correlation and regression and write my name dr neha taneja regression ko google karo uh, just write you'll get a short video of 5 minutes okay where you can study regression also regression ka matlab hi hota hai agar correlation matlab agar variable x axis mein badha to y variable ko kya hua बढ़ा घटा या कुछ नहीं हुआ अगर रिग्रेशन क्या होता है अगर एक्स एक्सेस में जो वेरिएबल है वो वन यूनिट बढ़ा या टू यूनिट बढ़ा या थ्री यूनिट बढ़ा तो वाई एक्सेस में जो वेरिएबल है वो कितने यूनिट्स अफेक्ट हो रहे हैं ठीक है कोएफ को रिलेशन को एफिशियंट का जो स्क्वायर होता है ना सोनल आर स्क्वायर इसको बोलते हैं को एफिशियंट ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन दिस इफ इट कम्स विल कम इन योर आई एन आई सी टी इन केस दे गिव यू ऑल राइट ठीक है सोनल डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड एक होता है को रिलेशन को एफिशियंट को रिलेशन कोफिशेंट ऑफ को रिलेशन कोफिशेंट ऑफ रिग्रेशन एंड कोफिशेंट ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन आर स्क्वायर कोफिशेंट ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन को करते हैं ठीक है तो आप गूगल करो मेरा वीडियो एक निकलेगा रिग्रेशन उसमें यह सब डिस्कस्ड है ठीक है पाँच मिनट का इफ़ यू हैव टाइम यू कैन सी इट इट्स ऑन यूट्यूब ओके वेरियंस होता है मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्शन वेरियंस का फॉर्मूला इज स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन स्क्वेयर ऑल राइट ठीक है ऑसवेल्ट ऑल राइट so I think that is it uh, guys I've created a playlist also which is there on my telegram channel for all the sessions taken so far April I will try to take a session um, one or two I will try to squeeze in guys but as your INI CT approaches one day I will take some 50 MCQs to help you practice and revise for your INI CT and then we will see how we will be planning for NEET PG and FMG it's just that April is a little difficult to squeeze is a little more time but uh, 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 during neat pg and fmg as the exams approach we get time so we can conduct more sessions on youtube okay everybody theek hai nahi um okay aaj karti hu all right okay thank you so much bye bye have a good day see you all